Welcome to the United Show, and I'm on the wrong side. <laughs> well, guys, welcome to United Show. I'm Nathan Ellison. I'm your host tonight, and I've got Garth with me as usual. Usual suspects. How you doing, Garth? Yeah, not bad, mate. Yourself? Yeah, I'm good. I'm really good. I can't wait for the, the next games to come across. To be fair, yeah. it's been um, you know, last game. It's been too many days now for for no games. So I'm not happy. <laughs> <laughs> um, got a lot to talk about today. By the way, we have got a lot to talk about, and um, obviously, what better to start off with than the um, the last game? You know, we had um, obviously we had the last game versus Villa, didn't we? So the Villa game takeaways, you know, I, I didn't get to watch the game live, but I watched the full match on the Man United channel. So, um, yeah, I had a lot to look at, a lot to think about. It was a game of two halves where we were obviously every game was a game of two halves. But first half, we were pretty much in control. We were like the Man United of old, to be fair. And I was thinking, you know what? United are looking pretty good. To be able to control um, Villa the way they did, and then to go on and score, it was great to see the goal because um, it was just nice play. Pass, passing right from the back from the goalkeeper. Moved it around everywhere. Ball got played out to Rashi. Rashi lets Shaw overlap. Shaw overlaps, crosses it back post and, Sh- and Sancho's there to bang it in through the legs of um, the defender. They could do nothing about it. Probably a 15 ball pass, passing move. It was just a great sequence of play and it was lovely to see with total control. And then... We're on the ball. Fred picks it up and goes, listen, I'm putting that ball over the top for you, Sancho. Right over the top, perfectly played. Sancho's through, Rashford's running. The ball gets played over to Rashford and he miskicks it completely. But luckily enough, the defender <laughs> has got his <laughs> leg out and it hit him and gone in and he's buzzing. And I'm thinking, he's never going to get that. That was never going on target. No. That just goes... Yeah, that just shows to me that he's still working on that 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 confidence because you've got to score them kind of goals. You shouldn't be thinking, should we have to bang that straight away? But yeah, that was my thoughts of the first half. We can talk about the second in a bit, but what did you see, Garth, in that first half as well? Uh, yeah, I, I think you see the sequence of play. It was lovely to see a sequence. Like I say, I only got to see the highlights of the match. So, so I will ask one thing, was because in the highlights, it didn't feel like Man United were wasteful in possession, but 83% on the passing statistics yeah, suggests they were quite wasteful then because obviously yeah, I didn't see that it yeah, was that bad was it yeah so yeah first a lovely goal but yeah lovely goal for Sancho nice to, and again one of the front three scoring which has been a big thing for me all through this preseason is these three young well I say youngsters these these three geezers now hopefully are going to step up to the plate I know Rashford had his uh at his moment but still I've liked what I've seen from Rashford he looks his head's back in the game the form will mm. come, I'm hoping, you know what I mean? So it, it's more about the mentality of him now. So no, yeah, no, I'm, I was, again, p- mildly pleased. Wasn't happy with the result in the end, but I'm guessing that's what we're going to get into now, the second half. Yeah, so so second half comes and we start off with the same team, but it was absolute blizzard out there. Seriously, the rain was ridiculous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and yeah, yeah. Was, like, drenched and I'm like, I, I, they're the games I hate to play in, to be fair. When you're totally drenched and it's raining that much and the pitch is, you can't stand up and you're like, I've got studs on though. What's going on? And when it's like that, you're like, man, just get me through this game and let's get out of it. So I could understand the thinking of the players after that half time. But to be fair, they started asleep. They was asleep. And um, to be fair, Leon Bailey, is, he, he, he can put people on skates, to be fair. And yeah, he was yeah, gone. Yeah. He was on the move, mate. He couldn't get caught. He ran, 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 cut him, bang, bottom corner. And it was like one of them ones where it went, it didn't even bounce. Like it was supposed to bounce, but the pitch just didn't allow it to bounce. And it kind of like just went in the air and just went and just continued on the floor and to that bottom corner. So it's like, it was a nice finish, to be fair. I've got to give it to him. Not much you can do to save that. Um, but we can't allow our players to get caught that far up the pitch. Like, sure, he was jogging back. Like, this is what the one thing I don't like about Shaw is he's jogging back. Like, why can't you sprint back? Why not sprint back? I know there's other players in that position, but you got to get there. That should be you busting the gut to get right back there. You're never going to catch Leon Bailey then anyway. But it's like, you know, when you've got a Lindelof and Maguire, you know they, they all they got to do, all they're going to do is drop off and drop off more because they can't come to you because they'll get done and yeah. they're totally free. So... It's so, okay, sure, you've got the pace to recover. Why don't you try your best to recover? But again, that's why I don't really like 
it, it's not, it's not, I'm picking on him a little bit, but that's why I don't really like that centre back pairing. Because oh, yeah. once you are caught with one player out of position, it's like the whole team is not the best. Like, it's just going to be easy. The floodgates are open and they went and scored. And then um, we made many changes. We made many changes second half. And to be fair, we couldn't keep the ball. The only good thing I liked about it was Bailly and Varane game on together for the first time I ever seen them. And then I was thinking, but the rest of the team can't keep the ball. So all they're going to have to do is defend all game. And then I was like, oh, they're probably going to concede a goal at some point. But um, yeah, that's really what happened. And it was just a game of let the game finish. I just hope the game finishes now. It's It was a nightmare. There was, was nothing really <laughs> to take it off. I don't know what you saw. Yeah. No, look, yeah, the, the, you always know there's no. Like I say I got the highlight package, so you always know there was nothing good because it's the main United highlight package, package as well, apart from Villa's goals, basically. So and I said like our second and then Villa's goals, yeah. Um, again, yeah, I like to see Varane and Bay only because that centre back partnership is not going to work with the way Ten Hag wants to play, and he's going to learn that quick. He, he needs to learn that quick. Because it's exactly what you said that they can't play high up like he wants them to. Not them two together. One of them with Varane, one of them with Bay. Definitely they can. But Maguire and Lindelof together, man, they they can't. They just get done. If they do play up that high, they're going to get done. And if they don't, you've got what happens when like it leaves us open to, like, because yeah, I, I agree with you on sure. I don't blame him as much though because in this system, it isn't his yeah. job per. I know what you're saying. He definitely should have done. But it isn't his job per mm. se, and he can't it all the time. So, but no, I saw yeah. nothing like. It, when the audience, I think I'm just counting now. There was ten changes in the second half. Once that happens, it's the same as we said against Palace. The game dies, yeah. you know. Especially once you've done the yeah. first fifty-five, sixty without it. So no, again though, no, I'm impressed with our front three. It's the first time I've been a little bit worried about our defence, but you presume at the start of the season, it's actually gonna be Martinez in it. No, don't, don't talk about that. Don't talk about that yet. We're, uh, about that. we're gonna say right, so we'll save that. Yeah, so so yeah, hopefully we won't have that sense of that partnership when it really matters. Uh yeah, yeah, but yeah. I'd like to hear your opinion on that very soon. Um yeah. he says uh, Harry Maguire's had a good tour so far. Mm, I think he's been okay. Last he played yeah. okay last game to be fair, but it's just that one against <coughs> uh, Melbourne victory where Obviously got paced out and they scored pretty simply. But um, apart from that, he's been okay. Um, but I just know, I just know what it's going to be when you man, when you play Prem. It's a, it's a massive different game. Um, yeah. And we just need to be able to attack the way we're going to attack. But anyway, what happens? Yeah. Last minute of the game, last kick of the game. Well, at least we'll hold on to a two-one victory. And the cross comes <laughs> in, the corner comes in, and 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 De Gea just nowhere to be seen. It's like pretty much on his line and. He just, it's like he's kind of like, you know, he, 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 he's not one to come out there and really command it. We know that. We know that's not what really he's about. And it just felt like a real soft goal to concede right at the end as well. I know we was under massive pressure for the second half once players changed, but it just hurts, isn't it? It's like a, it's just like a big letdown to be 2-0 yeah. up and then end up 2-2 with night. To be fair, it's a preseason game. We're never going to change that many players and lose total control of a game um, because of changing so many players. So, to be fair, I'm quite happy uh, with what I saw of the first half. But the only thing is, I'm not. I'm, I'm a bit concerned about the drop off of, of certain players because we don't have that great kind of players to come in in every position. That's got a few. Yeah. But not in every, isn't it, Gar? What do you think? That was going to be my next question to you, actually. Funny enough, are we now looking at Man United have got a team that we can play all right with under the Ten Hag system, but that's pretty much it. Like, we're going to have to really get some of our replacements up to speed with this team. Because it's... The, Palace was exactly... I know it's 10 players at once, so it does change it, but no one has really, in the, the 10 player change, made a step up and shone beyond anyone else, if you know. I mean... Yeah, I do, we have got someone. Donny van der Beek starting. I was pleased to see with. I did mention. Yeah. I, I forget to mention that. I did. Yeah. So yeah. nice to see him. So uh, showing that we may not need Frankie De Jong as much as we want him. Donny maybe can play that role. So yeah, that's another thing. To be fair, you know, he, he, I know he didn't do a lot. Yeah, he didn't do much in the game. But that's what I see him really being able yeah. to do. Somewhat, he could just keep the ball ticking and just keep it moving and, and just be part of the team. Where you don't look at him and go, oh, he's a drop off in terms of being able to pass the ball and link play. There'll be times where his link leads to something which leads to a goal. Yeah, yeah. And that's what I want to see. And and that's what that's why he's better for me in there than a McTominay because yeah, yeah. he has that about him. 
There'll be games where he's quiet, but there'll be games where he will be the focal point and he will play that killer ball. And another thing, I've been watching Martinez and the balls he plays, all them runs that he's been doing recently, yeah, and he never gets seen and he's like, come on, man, find me. Martinez plays them balls. Yep. So now we're going to see a big, big difference. It's like Gerard playing in behind a Torres. When Gerard's behind Torres, Torres is ready to move and he's playing the ball. No Gerard, no Torres goals. Simple. When, when he went to Chelsea, that's what was missing. He made them runs and he's like, where's Gerard? Oh, yeah, I'm at, I'm at Chelsea now. That's what happens. <laughs> you don't have the same kind of support behind you. And I feel like that was one thing that I can see was greatly missed. And which is that it's a piece of, to the puzzle for a Donny van der Beek as well. So I'm not giving up on Donny. I know he's got techers mm. to pay the bills. And I know he's got the brains as well. And I think he'll come good. Um, all right, yeah. that's the Villa take. You got anything more on that one? Well, yeah, I've just well, seen Benny here saying Donny didn't do anything again. And again, I agree. Like, yeah. Donny isn't going to be come the end of the season. Donny's stats, if he played every season, are going to be like two goals, three assists. Don't yeah. be looking at him for this. It's exactly what you said, Nathan. He is not going to be the man getting the assists or the goals. He's the man three passes before that yeah. happens. And we haven't had that in our team for a long time. Mm -hmm. I agree. He did nothing. He didn't do anything. But what I like, what I saw was a calm presence around the ball. Yeah. Something different that isn't, and I've got nothing against Scott McTominay. He's born, like, well, he's Scottish, but born and bred Man United. You know what I mean? Like, He's what you like to see come through, but we need a different option in there. We yeah. need someone who can play a defence splitting pass, especially now if we're going to be playing with that front three all day. We need to unlock their pace. We we need to with these quick balls, and he's got it. So, yeah, no, I, I, I'm happy with what I saw, but I agree. Oh. He didn't do anything. But this is the thing, though. Some games, they're different, aren't they? Some games, it's not him. Some games, it's not Bruno. Like, for a mm. while... Bruno hasn't actually been as effect, you know, as potent as he normally is. But we can see when that chance comes for him to set someone up, it will happen. And the same with Donny. When the ball goes to him and it gets and an opportunity happens, he won't waste it. That's the difference. And he will see yeah. it. That's another difference as well. We need more from him, Garth. Yeah, no, I agree. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We yep, yep. will get it, that's for sure. I believe anyway. We'll see um if if it's if it comes true. So we've got the second thing here. Well done, guys, on the uh, comments. Nice to hear. Uh, keep keep bringing them in. Keep saying everything you want on each topic. Make sure it's on the topic because we will be coming to you. I've seen some things. We will be talking about them shortly as well. So the next thing we're talking about is Shaw or Malassia to start because I've seen two sides to this. You know, I, I feel like Shaw might start, but that game that he played... Um, he was on. He was on fire. Um, what was the game now? The game was it um, Melbourne victory where he, put, he started that game. Palace was the gone. Palace, Palace the like, first sixty uh, minutes of Palace. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, uh, where we were, uh, we were yeah. awesome. Yeah, yeah. It was lovely that game. Um, yeah. Last game, obviously, he, he he had a bit of trouble with um, with Leon Bailey, but I can expect that Leon Bailey is a top top winger, and um, we didn't see the best of him yet. But you know, anyone coming up against that kind of pace and ability dribbling, you know, you're gonna be struggling. So. To be fair, he worked hard, but he can recover. That's the thing. He can recover. He can do his job. Shaw has done pretty well this preseason as well. Not great. Nor has Malassia really pulled up trees fully, but I can see Malassia being our first player. Um, but I can also see Shaw playing as well. Like, seeing what the manager's looking to do. I, I don't mind who starts, to be fair, out of these two. But I do want to see Malassia in the end coming through and being the main one because I can see he's got more about his game. He's got more, you know, work rate, more work ethic. Maybe he wants to get used to the league a bit more before he starts taking Shaw out, out of the game. Unless Shaw picks up his game and then starts popping it. And then he can't let Malassia, can't even get in. But what do you think of this one, though, uh, Oh, Funny, you took the words out of my mouth at the end there. Because um, I believe Shaw will start the season as first choice left back just because of seniority and because... Um, Mal Malassia hasn't played in the Premier League yet, but Malassia is the long-term future at left back, without a shadow of a doubt. I think mm. by Christmas time, I think we see Malassia su surpass Shaw as number one left back, unless Shaw does what he did when Telles turns up and becomes one of the best left backs in Europe for a season. <laughs> so it's actually a bit dangerous for Mal Malassia. I mean, it's a great problem to have, but yeah, because exactly what you're saying is right at the end there. If Shaw all of a sudden does what he did two seasons ago and becomes solid and an assist machine. What can he do? You know what I mean? Like so, 
I don't think I would personally. I think Malassia is our number one left back by the end mm. of the season, but I don't think he starts as our number one. I would personally. Yeah, so would I. But knowing, seeing, seeing what I'm seeing with the team, I think Ten Hag will just go with the more experienced head. The whatever you say about Luke Shaw, he can be like raises the wrong word. It, his concentration goes quite a bit, but he's a solid left back. You know what I mean? And you can trust him. You know what I'm saying? So uh, I say he starts. I, I reckon he starts for sure. I'd start with Malassia, but yeah, definitely by the end of the season, unless Shaw picks it up, Malassia takes it. So. Wow, I, 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 Oof, I it, yeah, looks like a premiership player. I'm quite sure. Sure, can look like a championship player, um, too many times. Um, yeah, 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 guys. Um, he will go with sure. Um, keep, I know what you mean, keep it up. Thanks, guys. Um, yeah, to be fair, you know, sure, he, I think he will also pull up his socks and he will end up trying to play a lot better. And the thing is, we are playing better football, so. Regardless of who plays, here's another thing that you. But the thing is, that is definitely one position that isn't too bad when you've got two players of them kind of levels. I think Shaw's not a bad level, and Malas. So whoever starts, it's not like, why are you playing him? For? No, exactly. You know yeah, I mean? it's not like that. So I'm quite happy with those two, and obviously Malassi is going to be my main man. Um, but let's say. Look, if Shaw starts, he starts. I'm at, I'm at me anyway. So yeah. unless he's the only, playing. yeah, yeah, yeah. The only thing I bad I saw because I like I say for me, Matt Ma- Manassia is our number one left back in the future. There's just little bits like he's he goes down too easy at the moment for tack. And you know, in the Premier League, you know this. You get you're getting done that first six weeks when you're not up to speed with it. So I, I just think you'll see this like slowly introduced. You know, what I mean, learn his trades. You know, like learn. You can't be going down that often in the pro because you're going to get burnt by these wingers out here. So. <laughs> yeah. You don't want to do what was his name? Remember when um, what was his name? Come through the youth, um, playing left back and right back, and he went to Norwich. Brandon Williams. Brandon Williams. So he was all action, yeah. But imagine, you remember how many times he did like he wanted to smash the player and he just slide him and they faked him and stuff. It just yeah, doesn't yeah, look good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nah. Like that. So um, I don't want to see that. To be fair, no. but yeah, okay, we we've got to the bottom of that. We yeah, got yeah. To the bottom of that one. Right. So the next one we've got here is a little one, which is pretty difficult. I'm gonna let you start with this one, guys. <laughs> I, I'm kind of um, I want to see what you got to say first. Um, Brandon Williams, baller. <laughs> right. Yeah. Here's the question for you: Who gets dropped for Ericsson and Martinez? Who gets dropped? Garth? I'm starting with you. And then I'll give my little two pence afterwards. Personally, who would I want or who do I think is actually getting dropped for them? Both. Up to you, both. Well, personally, I would drop Maguire. And look, this isn't an agenda against Maguire, but I'll drop Maguire for Martinez all day. Maguire left centre back for Ran or Bailly right centre back. That is how yeah. I'd have that immediately. Um, so that's an easy one for me. Uh, I don't, but that's the what heart. Do? Say, say again. And what do you think he will do? I think it's Maguire and Martinez that are starting. So I've got a feeling he drops for Ren, which is madness. It's madness. That's crazy, isn't it? Yeah. Absolutely crazy. Look at but, this. RH is in this madness. What, what's this? Maguire and McTominay, centre backs. You want to kill us? No, no. He's, drop, he's saying drop Ericsson and Maguire for. Oh. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Although the people have been saying it because he plays here for Scotland, don't he? He plays centre back for Scotland, Scotty. So. But not with Maguire. Maybe no. Instead of Maguire. Yeah. <laughs> not with him. As for Ericsson, um, there's a closed. I don't know if you saw this. Closed door friendly against Wrexham. He scored a free kick apparently. Yeah. So. Yes, yes, yes. I don't think. And Garnacho, yeah, I don't, yeah, I saw that. Yeah, I don't think he starts Ericsson. Uh, so I don't think he's replacing anyone. I think if we don't get Frankie De Boer, he has more no. chance playing in that central midfield role. If we do, then he's Bruno's replacement for what you know. He, he's the different option, you know. what I mean, in that number ten role with Donny, basically him, Donny and Fred and Scotty are all going to be fighting pretty much for that second centre midfielder spot, ain't they? If we get to John, because yeah. Bruno, whatever we say. He isn't getting dropped, I don't think. Unless er- Ericsson's a beast, but unless well, he starts doing well. something mental, he ain't getting dropped. But yeah, why? Well, uh, and as for the heart, I don't think I would take Ericsson over Bruno. Bruno's done a lot. I, I, if Ericsson can prove it, because he's a baller, 
I'm all yeah. for putting him in, you know what I mean? But yeah, Bruno for me to start with. But where, where are you going in? Who's getting dropped for you? Yeah, to be fair, I think Bruno will start. I think Ericsson will probably start on the bench um, because that's probably the position that I expect him to be in um, in the end, in the hole, in the 10. Um, but I have a feeling that he might even play him in that central position as well. Um, just, you know, that McTominay position or, and leave Fred to be the deep lying one at the moment. Um, so he could do that. But it just means that we're a little bit lightweight in that midfield. It feels a bit too lightweight. It's a bit weird, but, you know, I think the games where we're expected to win at home, we could see Ericsson behind Bruno and then Fred behind him or even McTominay behind him. But I don't want to see McTominay, of course, because just because of the ability to progress the ball as much. So for me, Ericsson comes in for a McTominay or comes in for... I think that's the only one to be yeah. fair. Or comes in when Bruno's coming off. Secondly, Martinez, he's come straight into the left sided centre back. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. Can see, you can see definitely he's put Maguire right side uh -huh. with the four that he's going to try out. He's definitely going to be trying Martinez and Maguire because Varane's injured. I'm guessing because he's been injured, he's probably going to start with those. But I can't see why he would want to really sit there with a Varane sitting on the bench. And and Martinez and 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 and, and Maguire starting, and you sit, look to the side, and you sit on your bench, and you go, "There's buying Varane there." It just doesn't make sense to me. It just really doesn't make sense yeah. to me. My head spinning if I see that happen. But he's our captain, and the captain plays. So end of the day, unless he has bad game and he has to come off, and I really do believe he will do that. I, I think we're definitely going to see Martinez and Maguire start. Yeah, but yeah. it won't be. It will not be long before Maguire starts messing up, and we, he shows his frailties. And obviously, he'll end up coming out. I don't believe he's like the old managers who will just keep him in there, keep him in there while he's playing bad. He will take him out straight away. So I, I, I hope that happens. Another thing, something that I saw on Twitter. I don't know if you've seen it. But it's a major, major debate, yeah. And it was so funny because it was who is the better on the ball, Maguire or Bailly? And guess what it was? The percentages. 65 Bailly, 35 Maguire. And you know what? It's weird. I'm going to give my little opinion on that. Like, dribbling on the ball, turning out of trouble and stuff, moving the ball, I think Bailly's better. Playing longer balls, I don't think Bailly's better, yeah? Mm. But here's the thing. Bailly's better. Because Maguire, he's all, <laughs> all calm, yeah? He's all nice and calm and stuff, and he's relaxed. But good to see you, Marcel. Yeah. Yes, yeah, yeah, yes, yes. Sorry, I'm late, guys, man. I, I'm, I had a connectivity issue, so I've, I've moved to my, no to my grand quickly to just set it up. No problem, no problem. I'm just, <laughs> we just caught up in the middle of this, um, this Bailly Maguire kind of question on uh on twitter that we had 65 35 in, in favor of Bailly. yeah, and yeah. I was just saying that i think he's a better player um he's better on dribbling on the ball he's not better playing longer balls but i don't think Maguire is that good anyway at playing yeah, yeah. long balls the amount of times he kicks him into touch and kicks them out he just looks good when he comes forward slowly but that that looks like you know, <laughs> looks like you've got confidence and your calmness about yourself. But when you boot it out of play, it's not enough. It's yeah. not enough for me. So none of them are particularly that good at playing balls. But if you ask me who's the better on the ball, I'm going to give Bai the ball in terms of on the ball, dribbling out of trouble, spinning out of trouble, faking and going the other way. I like Bai for that. So Marcel, you've been away. I want you to give me your answer on this one. I don't know if you thought about it yet, but. Let me know. So between Ericsson and Bailly, I mean, oh, no, sorry, no, it was Ericsson and Bailly. Maguire and Bailly, who's the best on the ball? Um, 65% think... said Bailly and 35 said Maguire. Well, I, I know Maguire's pattern of play is usually dribbling down that left-hand side or a little cut back cross, um, a pass, sorry, back to Luke Shaw. Um, but Eric Bay, when he dribbles at the ball, he causes so much trouble. We've seen that early in the preseason, two very dangerous drives with the ball through the central areas. And, you know, he's got a little bit of a trick about him. He's got, you know, very rat-like. It's very rash, but aggressive at the same time, what he's doing. Um, mm. 
sometimes it's a it's a bit too much. I mean, sometimes he does lose the ball. He has a tendency to lose it a bit more than maybe Maguire. But the quality that Maguire has is not as high as Eric Bailly, in my opinion. I mean, sometimes, you know, these are very wayward passing. I've only seen really one great um, passing display, which was at West, against West Ham at Old Trafford mm -hmm. from uh, Maguire when it was really good. All his passes were really good. So, I don't know. I think Eric Bailly, I think, might leave, you know, guys. I'm I'm not sure if if I've been reading that Eric Bailly is touted around ten million or so. So what we'll ten mil? Of course, mm -hmm. someone's getting a bargain if they snap him yeah. up for ten mil, mate. Yeah, yeah, AS uh, AS Roma. So um, I don't know. I think unfortunately we'll see what happens there. But Maguire most probably gets to go ahead. Um, uh, but I would prefer Eric Bailly like yourself, Nathan. Good, good, good. Garth, what you got to say about that one? I can see where this debate's coming from because pre-season Maguire's had a couple of these like these runs out of the fence, ain't he? It's the first time people are seeing it and they've got all excited. But no, Maguire is by no way anywhere near as good as by as a footballer, like a skillful footballer. He just isn't. Maguire isn't about that, is he? Maguire's a, a and that's what he was bought for to be a Bosch a Bosch. He's got a reasonable pass on him as well, but he isn't a like a Rolls Royce defender, you know what I mean? Is like coming out and playing that ball, he's all right. But no, yeah, buy all day. And I tell you, if someone gets in for 10 mil, that's madness for Man United. That's just getting him off the books, that is. That's madness because he's that's worth the 30. Crazy. He's worth the 30 mil we paid for him all day right now still. Yeah. He's still worth that 30 mil. But yeah, no, listen, and I've got nothing against Maguire. Maguire's a different centre-back to, to Baye. He, he really is. They're, they're different. But baye has got that flair about him. It's like, like, yeah, it gets him in trouble. And yeah, it was the slowest step over I've ever seen. But it's still a step over <laughs> from a centre-back, you know what I mean? So, so yeah, no, Baye for me. Bye. Miles better. Yeah. My <laughs> Miles. Hey, this is my friend Raj as well. I don't know what he's been drinking, but... Yeah, hey, you know. Now, uh, don't get why fans want to get out, uh, dude. Diddy Dumb said, um, and we got because he can't kick. Right. So, <laughs> we've got the question as well, we, me and Garth have already answered this. So, let me want to hear yours uh, on this. Who gets dropped for Ericsson and Martinez? Wow. Um, McTominay looks already like the first candidate for any sort of player that's not technical enough or hasn't got a good balance of, of both sides of the game. I think Fred's kind of proved that he can kind of do that six role ish a bit yeah. better than Scott and kind of retain the ball in, in, in the busy midfield area. So you, you look at him straight away. And then for Ericsson, that's a great question. I mean, you've got the top three there, the very fluid so far. That's that's maybe the, the best point of the whole preseason. We've got a very fluid front three. Yeah. It's just um, Bruno, where do you put Bruno? Do you put him in the eight position? Do you trust Ericsson in the 10? If you're going to let play Martinez, are, are we talking about Martinez in the midfield or Martinez? No. Um, no. So back, who's he coming in for? And Ericsson is going to come in somewhere midfield. Who's he coming in for? And who do yeah. you think? Who do? Who would you put him in for? And who do you think ETH is going to put him in? Where? Do you oh, think well, okay. Well, my I, my preference would be Martinez and Eric Bay at the moment. That would be my preference in the back line. What will happen? Yes! <laughs> what will happen? What will happen though? It will be. Um, it will be Maguire and Ericsson. Yeah, um, yeah. Uh, no, um, Maguire and Martinez, sorry. Because, yeah, you know, yeah. similar to a daily blind and um, and Timba kind of thing, you know, Timba will be react reenacted as Martinez and, and daily blind hopefully as Maguire. That will be the, 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 the original plan there. Then with Ericsson coming into that midfield, then it's a it's a swatch for McTominay, for sure. It'll be Fred still there, especially if we don't get Frankie De Jong. Yeah. It'll be Fred yeah. still there and then it'll be Ericsson and Bruno. Yeah. Uh, if he's worth the 30 million, RH says he's always injured. By he. he's no world be a decent, but not good as you're saying. To be fair, he's not always injured anymore, so we just stop saying that. You're gonna trigger Nathan, you're gonna trigger him if you say he's injured all the time. So, <laughs> you know what? What it happens in football once you've got yeah, a name, yeah. once you've got that label, you're man, forever, yeah, no what happens. Yeah, he could, he could get injured from anything now and he's just injury prone no matter what. If he goes down injured from like hitting his head and he's has to come off, then I'll say he's glass again. But until then, he's been a little while now, he's not been injured. So towards the end of the previous season, he's been injured pretty much the whole time compared to anyone else. He's not been more injured than anyone else. So I'm happy. Garth, you're a beast pundit. <laughs> though, keep yes, up the good work. Um, your opinions are neat, lad. Uh, Marcel, Nathan and Garth doing a great job. Hi, guys and girls. Candy Jennings. 
and I can't keep up tonight. <laughs> so just before we, just before we move on, do you think Martinez is definitely coming in centre back? It feels like it is for me. He's coming in there. Yeah. There is no defensive midfield situation now. No left back. He's definitely centre back. You know. Yeah, yeah I think that's you can see he moved Mark White, didn't he? He moved Mark yeah. to the right side. Yeah, 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 yeah. It has to be. It has to be now. So yeah. So then definitely, Core. Cool. What's Varane going to do then? That's oh, madness. Yeah. We're leading on to guys. Oh, sorry. There you go. There you go. <laughs> Look at that. I'm, I'm, uh, great minds, Nathan. Great. Oh. This show's flowing nice, bro. I like it. What a segue. What a segue. <laughs> so, the question is, can Maguire retain the centre-back spot ahead of Varane? Because we know Martinez ain't got no one to, rate, to be playing against. That left side's his. Right side, Varane or Maguire. Or bye. But, obviously, we know that Varane is the next one along the line. So if you're asking me, it's no question about it whatsoever. Varane should play. Unless he's injured, I'm playing Varane. But I know ETH, somehow, he before he signed up, when they came to him and said, listen, can you take the job? The only one thing we will not allow you to do is take Maguire out of this squad. And under no circumstances can you take Maguire out of this squad, no matter how bad he's playing, he has to play. I feel like that's going on for some, for some reason because... It's weird. Any other player doesn't play so well, like that bad, they shouldn't be playing, really. Um, you know, when, when Rashford wasn't playing well, we was all saying, listen, sit down for a bit and then come back and come back in and, you know, get bled back in. Same like Maguire, sit down. Well, not really the same because he's, he's not. I don't think he had enough to be able to do that consistently anyway. But anyway, Varane for me, number one. Baye, number two. Maguire, Joint number third with Lindelof. Um, let's go. Back. What are you saying? <laughs> Can't even put him above Lindelof. He's like, no, nah, I'm not having it. Joint worst. Joint worst in the club. Um, I agree with everything you said, man. I, I really do because, yeah, like you're saying, once when uh, Rashford was playing poorly, everyone was saying he needs uh, he needs to be dropped. I've been saying it for ages. Maguire needs an extended time on the sidelines. I think that's half his problem was he he was being played as if he was undroppable. For, for a season and a half, like, and no, nah, I don't, I don't understand it. Even if you're club captain, you're not undroppable, mate. Varane is, by all intents and purposes and stats and everything, the better centre back than Maguire. He ain't starting over Maguire. I, I, like you said, I don't know why. We don't see training, but Maguire obviously is getting the nod to to start. That's why we, we've been. It would have been interesting to see if Varane had stayed fit through pre season whether Varane would have been starting over Maguire. Clearly, Bailly isn't starting over Maguire in the first team. Clearly, he isn't because he's been getting the game time. So, my heart says, yeah, it should be Varane. Um, but the head says it's going to be Maguire. And the head says it's going to take Varane a lot to displace him, I think. A lot. What are you telling me, what are you telling me Marcel? What do you think of this, this one here? 100. 100 percent agree with Garth. The interesting thing is, you know, availability is a footballer's best real ability, you know. And Maguire is, is master at that. He's always there. I mean, like you were yeah. saying before, I've never seen a player have a whole season, almost every single game be poor. Every yeah. single game he played last season was poor. But because he's always available um and, and fit to play, is you you've got to select him. Um he's he's a captain yeah. as well for the for the club, so I can see him getting the go-ahead, but like, like you were saying, and like everyone's been saying, it's going to be very hard for Rand to displace him. But we can't trust him for three game weeks or, or, for, or for two games consecutively in a week. Right? And it's going to, we're, we're playing Thursday, Sunday or, or Thursday, Monday or Thursday, Saturday. Mm. It's going to be very difficult. Um, Rotation is going to be key then. But if you want that solid back four, a lot of people would say, you know, you want a consistent back four out of anything. A consistent back four, understand each yep. other, responsibilities and trust. And, and Maguire is going to be key to that. Um I think, like like the comments said, then potentially Varane might be shifted out of the club if you can't stay fit. Um, same with Eric Bailly. Um, We need to look at the players like Wesley Fofana, even though he just picked up a huge injury. But it's got to be that next young and couple coming up um, centre back. Um, you know that's got high uh, high potential. Um, yeah. The likes of Fofana, we got to take a cut. We got to cut our losses on Maguire at some stage. I think we'll end up doing that. Um, mm. He just can't protect those spaces in behind us. We've seen the counter attacks, and that's our biggest Achilles' heel right now on this side the counter-attacks and leaving space in behind us. Varane would be perfect for that. He's a sweeper type. and um, we, It should really be, most probably, Varane or Eric Bailly and Martinez. But um, yep. uh, it will be Maguire. Um, and that we would have to alter the tactics for that. Um, so it's going to yes. be Maguire. Yeah. Garth, what you got to say on this one? 
Yeah, no, 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 that's exactly what I was saying. Yeah, I, I agree entirely. I would love to see us cut our losses on, on Maguire. I don't see it happening. I don't know why either. This is the weirdest thing. Like, it's never been like, mate, like, we've took hits on players before. We took a hit on Di Maria, you know what I mean? We knew it wasn't working, took that hit. You know yeah. what I mean? We took a small hit on Lukaku. We knew it wasn't working. It wasn't a hit, but we still sold him for less than we bought. You know what I mean? Like, we've took hits on players. Will Saha, you know, like, like mm. we've, we've done it. There's something that we don't see in training. There has to be. I don't know what it is because it ain't on the pitch, man. Because <laughs> no, really what Marcel just said, there's what we were talking about at the beginning of the show. It's this. It's the way that Ten Hag plays. He's going to have to learn quickly that Maguire and even Maguire Martinez, Maguire can't handle that. Getting people, letting people get in behind him, him having to turn and run, that's not his game. It just yeah. isn't. And it's, un, it's a bit like what I said about Pogba. It's almost unfair on him to keep asking him to do it when we know it's not his game. So, yeah, he, he should fall. He won't, obviously. And then, yeah, we're going to get, weirdly, we'll end up losing Varane and Baye just as they're both looking. Because Varane, I'm sure that's just that first season niggle in the Premier League thing. I'm hoping that happens to a few players. You know, they come over, they're not used to the intensity of the training. They're not used to the weather. It happens, you know what I mean? So I'm hoping it's that. Because if it goes on again this season, like the last season, 30 mil, we're not going to get 10 for him, you know what I mean? Because he's definitely injury prone. So. Yeah. I got a question for you guys. Who, who's our yeah. vice captain next season? If 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 who do we look to as the next leader after after Maguire? If if Maguire is not fit, if if he if he doesn't break into the side, because I really think you know Varane's got a class above him, Eric Bay's got a class above him. So what mm. happens if he gets into a situation where he doesn't break into the side? Who do we look to as our next captain? I think Bruno. I think Bruno will get it. You know, he he looks. He's been looking very consistent as well throughout the whole preseason. He's looked very consistent and someone you can depend on. And you know he's going to get goals and you know he's going to get assists. And he'll, yeah. in this kind of football, I can count on him to play seven minimum every game from what I can see. Because when you've got structure around you and you've got that ability about you, it's not often people keep you quiet. It's like a De, um, De Bruyne, isn't it? You don't keep the, a De Bruyne quiet. Right, You're yeah, just yeah. killing it. So, yeah. Um, before we carry on, guys, please uh, hit that like and subscribe as much as you can. And then, um, obviously, the subscribe is to the Duke United show. Um, yeah, so that's me. What's what I got to say about that? But, Garth, what what you got to say about that one, man? Watching the, the friendlies, our, obviously, our vice captains are De Gea and Bruno. They're the ones who are getting the armband when and if, if you know what I mean. I will take back what I said a few weeks ago to you, Marcel, about I can't see him as captain at all. I still <laughs> wouldn't want him as captain. I still wouldn't. <laughs> But I've been saying the, the two pro matches we've did, I've said it's a different Fernandez. Without, and I don't know if it's Ronaldo, but with him being freer in this system, being able to, freer yet more controlled, and I love it. He's been given room to do what he wants, but he's playing much more confined role on the pitch. He's looked all right. It, like, with a clear, clear set of direction and rules, he's looked like he's there for the team and everything. But there is no one else. I, I stick with this, what we're saying. For me, there is no other captain in this team. I don't even think Harry Maguire's a captain. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. But what did you think of um of Rashford Garth? Rashford had it for a little while. Um, he was he had the captain armband. He scored with the armband. He was with the kids a little bit. Eric Bay was playing in that side. I think Donny as well. But Rashford yeah. had the band. What do you think of him? Maybe not now, but as he matures, as he gets older. Oh yeah, that's what I was about to say. Season. Yeah, that's what I was about to say. Not right now. I can definitely see it. He's man, like he's a leader. He's a like look at everything he does off the pitch and everything. You know what I mean? He's someone who can, and I don't mean leader in a Roy Keane sense uh, sort of way. I mean leader in a do as I do sort of way, you know what I mean? Like that sort of leader by actions and so on and so forth. So easily seeing him in the future, but not off the season, not off the back of the season he's just had. He needs to 100% concentrate on football. But yeah, like so, so yeah, for me at this moment, no, there is no one. There's Harry Maguire and then there's De Gea, Bruno or Cristiano if he's still here next season, you know what I mean? So, but yeah, yeah I, would you give it Cristiano? No one? Give it? Nah, mate, he's get, he, he's on his last legs, mate. He's getting out of it. Yeah. There's no way he's gonna be getting the, the captain's armband when he's got to go. Uh, if obviously if he's if he's playing, he might get the captain's armband. Because obviously, for what he's done, nobody is really can be higher ranked than him. To be fair, but um, I don't want him captain because he just wants to get out in it. Why do you want to captain someone who wants to let them get out of it? You know, a captain would be Martin. Oh, that's a new one. You know, I ain't thought about that, but I don't think it happens so soon because he's just come. But mm. he looks like a type of player who's a warrior, as he says, 
Yeah. And you know, he might be leading by example. So it might not be long until you see this guy with the captain's armband once he gets his, his name in there, starts getting used to the boys and that. I could see that happening. Um yeah. what about anyone you, with the, anyone with the nickname the butcher of Amsterdam is captain material for me, you know. I mean, anyone yeah. with that nickname, mate. So <laughs> you know what comes to mind? I keep thinking of Rojo for some reason. Every time I think it is this guy. <laughs> <laughs> he just wants to make sure you don't lose don't lose. I think he's he's got that streak in him. So I, I think I like, he's got a better passing range than Rojo, though. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. For sure. I hated his passing range. When I I went down to the game and I saw him at left back and I was like Rojo, what were you doing? Play the ball. What's wrong with you? You could have played the ball. That's the line. He wouldn't play the ball where you where you know you gotta play it. He just wasn't doing it. So I was a bit peeved with him, to be fair. But defensively, he was obviously he wouldn't let anyone pass him unless even if they did, he's yellow card or red card. I ain't letting you pass me, that's for sure. So I love that about him. But what do you think then, Mars? What, what, what do you think about that, Marcel? Um, I think Bruno's next in line. Um, I've, I've always said Bruno should be the captain anyway. I think he's he, he's another one of those always available as the best ability. A lot of people, you know, it's a very split divide in terms of his ability on the pitch, but he's yeah. always available. You know, he picks up a lot of injuries. He's always on the floor. People complain about that kind of thing, but he's always a, he's always available to play the next game. So... I think you got to put him in there. He's one of my favourite players and I think he's got them leader qualities. He gets along with everyone within the squad. Um, I would say Rashford's the next in terms of a future captain. I like the I like the 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 Martinez um shout from the from the comment section. Really good shout. Yeah. But in the future as well. Varan, a lot of people like Varan, but is he available enough? I wouldn't put De Gea, I wouldn't put Martinez. I wouldn't put Maguire, sorry. Yeah. Okay, okay, good, good, good. Right. So we're on to the next subject. And this one is uh, one that needs sorting out before the end of the season. Um, there's two things that need sorting out before the end of the season. And then our next two topics, to be fair. And number one is CR7 returns. But for how long is he returning for? Because he's had a meeting. He's come back. He's in the training ground. He's saying, from what I'm hearing, I don't know if this is true, but he wants his contract cancelled. Like, we can just go, yeah, there you go, mate. Off you go. Wherever you're going, no one's going to have to pay for you. I just, yeah, there you go. Who, who wants your contract? I'll go, go on then. See you later. I don't see that happening. I can't see that happening. We've got one striker, basically, in Marshall who's been playing up there. And no one else that's really playing up in that position. And to be fair, we've only got three players up top, really, that are really going to be the main guys who can actually come in and you can definitely depend on them. And they have done it before. So I can't see Cristiano leaving. Number one, because nobody's after him, especially if they have to pay money and then pay 360 k a week. I don't see that happen if that's how much it is. And um, Cristiano, you're just going to have to sit tight, mate, and just relax on the bench and come off the bench when Martial gets tired and then work your way into the first team if you can do that. So, Garth, what are you saying? What are you telling me? Um, we'll know a lot more after the Atletico Madrid game on Saturday, because that's the last team, that's his last option now, it's Atletico Madrid, of the rumours out there. Everyone else is apparently, like, we don't know, no, but Bayern, Juve, Real, they've all turned him down, or not turned him, just way to put it, I've said that they're not interested in him at this moment in time, you know what I mean? So, he's in trouble, because he's got to come back to Man United. Um, I look, Listen, when he was going to join Man City, before all this happened, and everyone was up in arms about it, I said it then, and I mean it, as great as a player he is for Man United, he's low down the list of legends for me. He he doesn't owe this. Like, he's not a Man United through and through man, and he never has been. Everyone seems to forget. You got, like, I remember distinctly him forcing a move out of Man United to go to Real Madrid. However you want to coat it, yeah, he gave us another season. He still thought he was the best player in the world. We didn't want to sell him. Fergie didn't want to sell him. You know what I mean? So, listen, it, it's about his career for him, and, I, and this is why I'm going with this, and I can't disrespect the man for it. Mm. If it's true, he's turning around now, and because I always thought he was the number one professional, he's turning around and now saying, "Mate, not only do I want to leave, you've got to cancel my contract." Then no, I can't have that from him. What's he doing? That ain't the Ronaldo I've heard that I've heard about for all these years, Mister no. Professional. I'm I'm desperate for that to be paper talk, but I don't know if it is. Like it doesn't seem like. Excuse me, it doesn't seem like it is. It seems like it's gone around. Everyone's saying it, and if that's the case. I don't know. He's rich enough. I'd ask him to pay us out then. They've gone 15, like 12 mil by contract yeah. out, mate. Yeah. yeah like, exactly. If you want to go early, pay yeah. us 15 mil and get out of it. Yeah. Get because uh, from what I've seen of our front three, 
I am no in preseason friendlies. I am nowhere near as worried about losing Cristiano Ronaldo as I was six weeks ago. I'm just not anymore. If these boys can do half of the, what they're doing at the moment, I'm happy for the season. So yeah. Right, right, right. Garth, uh, uh, Marcel, what you got to say about this one? I know you must have a bit to say on this. Um, like 100% agree with Garth. Um, like the the front three right now has been the key poignant point of of the preseason. They're very fluid. So to come and break that up. For someone that doesn't really want to play for the club, 100% agree. He's not one of our greatest legends in terms of Manchester United through and through. You know, he he forced that move out. So, you know, mm. I, it's a conflict of interest now at this current point. Um, You know, he wants to go and win trophies now and we're building something. And you can clearly see it's working now. You know, we've had players that didn't want to be part of the squad. They're now focusing and being part of the squad. So mm. to break that up again now, to break up Martial's fluency now, it just wouldn't make sense. Um, we, we are a team about being with future stars, young future stars. For years, we've been about that. So for us now to go and put all our onus and all our eggs in this Ronaldo basket, it doesn't make sense for me. Um, I agree with that. That's a really good point. Pay out your contract then. If you want to leave, you, we, we've given you the due diligence. Go and find whoever you want to find. Nobody wants you in world football right now. <laughs> Nobody wants you in world football right now. So pay out your contract and we can utilise that 12 million for maybe a young, hungrier striker yeah. and somebody else. And, and Anthony, we need we need reinforcements there. Like you said, Nathan, that's a great point. You only got really three first team forwards. The rest, yeah. the, the drop of quality is so huge. So Ronaldo would be useful um, and yeah. he would bring competition. He's got, he's got the calibre, but... He needs to go. Um, we need to upgrade on the Martial. We need to upgrade on Rashford, and we need to upgrade on 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 Sancho. So if yeah, that means yeah. going into the market and finding that, um, and and it's somebody that the manager trusts in Anthony, I think he has to go. I'm, I'm hearing that he can get a year that it might be a loan this season, and then we extend the year contract. But I just don't like this. This is Ed Woodward economics. Yeah. You know, we, this this was a signing that was this was the Ed Woodward's last piece of business, and and it's just shown what it's been transpiring. Um. Mm. Uh, I hope that you know we can see the end of this and we get some some new forwards and we can look towards building for a future because it's going to take a few years now until we start winning trophies. So he's yeah. going to be in the same predicament maybe next season. I yeah. don't get I it. I like the way you said um, we were looking for an upgrade on Martial, an upgrade on Rashford, an upgrade on Sancho, not someone to come in to be behind them. You know, like mm -hmm. a lot of people talking about the Eventonis and, and, and these players. I know he's like a different type of option. But I'm, as long as you're saying an upgrade, that's what I want to hear, to be fair. Garth, what were you going to say there? I just heard you. you no, you know, no, I, I agree entirely. What, what, so what did you say myself? That there was rumours that we're going to let him go out on loan for a year yeah, and yeah. then give him another year after that yes, sir, because so we'll be back in the Champions League. That's madness. Yeah, no, it'll be 39. Yeah. Yeah, that's madness. Yeah. So he's got, a, he's, got a year, he's got a year extension, I believe. Yeah, Garth. Not yeah, yeah. yeah. He's got a year. No, yeah, definitely that. Yeah, yeah, he's got that. I know he's got that, yeah. yeah so. So, so, so the rumour was that we was going to let him go out on loan to a Champions League side and then and and hopefully we would have a supplement some of their weight some of his wages or they'll have to yeah, yeah we'd have yeah, to pay some of his wages yeah. yeah yeah and then um and then and then he, he'll come and join us next season but I just we're Manchester United yeah, no. we love this club all of us here love this club clearly more than this man so just yeah. let him go I, I don't yeah. understand I just yeah. let him go exactly. Mark Hughes was a proper man United yes. Marky, even he's hiding Ronaldo for me Obviously, oh, yeah. he's like yeah. he's in the he's in the he's in the history books, big time Mark Hughes. And he just remember yeah. him as I hold up play, king of hold up play. That's what I remember. King of the scissors kick, mate, as well. King of the scissors kick. It's like, yeah. look, Ronaldo is possibly the greatest ever player that's played at Old Trafford, uh, but he yeah. isn't an out and out Man United legend. So I don't want anyone to think I'm taking anything away from Ronaldo. I just mean yeah. when you go like the guys say, when you go for the pantheon of players, I'd have Sparky above him. Of course I would. I don't like obviously I'd have I know people yeah. like Brian McClare over him, you know what yeah. I mean? Ronnie Young, like these players that were stalwarts at the club for so many yeah. years, etc., etc. et So, yeah, nothing, yeah. Yeah, he's up there. He's still up there, yeah. though, but he's obviously not... Oh, he's up there, yeah. But, yeah, he just isn't like the... like. Chris Deronado should never get a statue outside Old Trafford. There's mm. there's too many players and managers that deserve one before he does. That's probably the best way to yeah. put it, you know what I mean? But this Facebook user, before I say this, um, just to change your Weird, setting... Eh? And put your name in and um, we'll be able to know who you're, who's actually speaking or come over to YouTube and subscribe from there. We'll see your name from there. And um, we've got CR7 can go. He's always been all about himself. He only came to us last season as City didn't want him. Our fan base are so deluded thinking he came back to us and rejected City. Let him go to the team. Uh, let him go to the team. Can't be any worse than last season with or without him. Ooh, we've got RH saying... 
An upgrade on Sancho, I don't think he's needed to be replaced as an upgrade. Sancho is a class player. He hasn't been used right. The Dortmund record don't lie for me. Marcel, wake up. I think you got that wrong a little bit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Competition, for yeah, yeah. Oh, hey. Competition for places is what I'm talking exactly. about. Yeah. Just you need that healthy balance. Like we was talking about, you know, I, I keep referring back to it. Dwight York, Andy Cole, Oli, and 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 Teddy Sheringham, all elite yeah. strikers. Yeah. You know, you want that competition for places. Yeah, that, I get that. I believe Eric was the... He is the talisman, and he's the main man for me. Whenever you think United, you think collars up, Cantona. Yeah. Simple yeah. as that. I was just the right age for Cantona as well, you know I mean? I'm like 11 years yeah. old when he's smashing it about for Man United, so... <laughs> I, 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 I was ready for that. I was only watching. Remember the Nike football advert, the one where they're playing yeah. like the demons. The, yeah, I saw that. I was showing that to the missus only the other day. I was showing that to her. <laughs> sick, sick, sick. Unbelievable. Okay, you just saw a sneak peek of the last bit. We got the last one here. We got the last thing we're talking. Before about. we just go back, just quickly on Ronaldo again. This Ronaldo only loves himself. Ronaldo. This is my problem with it. As much as he has always been about the brand, it never let it never really affected his professionalism with a club yeah. in my mind him saying he wants out of his contract now that's affecting my perspective of him as a professional if he has done that where before yeah it was all about him and the cr7 brand but it never interfered with his football you know what i mean it never like him needing to be in the champions league is an optics thing for me and it, there's a bit weird out of nowhere and, but i understand it but yeah i'm like i don't think he's a I don't think he's as narcissistic as I, I might have sounded like I'm making out, if you know what I mean. Yeah. But he, he, he's a professional at the end of the day, so... Yeah, to be fair, I don't... I, you know, for me, I think he's, he, he's well within his right to want to leave and get going. But if no team wants you, why did the hell did you come out and start talking before you found out from your agent who wants you? That don't make no yeah. sense. Because he thought... Found, so. It's Cristiano Ronaldo. He thought yeah, everyone was. Ego. Yeah, the ego. The ego yeah. got him. Yeah, 100% ego yeah. got him. Yeah. You're getting old. You are not as good as you used to be. You can keep scoring bangers, but at the end of the day, you're not as you're not like the player who can pick up the game from the scruff of the neck and absolutely tear it on your own like you used to. Like he was absolutely amazing when he was younger. But obviously, yeah, yeah. we all get older. Father time calling you, mate. Let's mm. all look. Yeah. Let's be happy with and, and, and graceful. In your, in your, in your age. Uh, there's only so many clubs that can afford him as well. That's the other thing, isn't it? There's yeah. literally there's a handful of teams that can afford. Him. Well, after what I just found out, Nottingham Forest gave Jesse Lingard. Maybe Forest had got a little cheeky do up their sleeve. You know what I mean? Well, so, uh, well, premiership money for you, isn't it? Yeah, it's madness, man. Newly promoted team. Oh right. god. We've got the last what seven minutes to talk about this guy. <laughs> um, right. So the young saga continues. We hear all this madness. We're hearing, um, you know, everyone talking all this stuff, and Xavi saying he's, you know, he's not going to give send signals. But listen, he's done well. He's good. Dude. He's great. He's great at, at, at centre back for us. <laughs> <laughs> um, we love him. We think he's very good. But listen, there's a financial problem here. Um, but yeah, um, how you doing? Um, I, I, <laughs> how you doing, Lewa? How you doing? <laughs> <laughs> How you doing? What the hell's going on at Barcelona where they're bringing in players after players and saying, listen, mate, the young, they ain't got no money, mate. <laughs> but wait a minute, I see him just come from the door. I did as well. They're taking an absolute mick out of him. That's number one. I'll be out of there. If I was him, I'd be out of there. And I'll be taking my money. I'll be getting him writing. I want my money when I leave. And I ain't leaving until you've got it in writing. I don't care how long you give, you take. You can pay me in installments if you want, but I'm out of there and I'm going United. Obviously, if I'm De Jong, I'll be going Champions League if there was the option or Man United if there was just Man United. So that's me. That's what I think. Um, what do you think? <laughs> he ain't coming, man. He ain't coming. He ain't coming. And it's, <laughs> and it's dead, like, because you boys had me, you boys got me. You had me on the train. <laughs> You, I, I, you sold me a ticket, I bought it, I sat down, and that thing went off the rails about two days later. After you got, I was like, no, nah, it ain't happening for ages. You boys hyped me up, and then two days later, it's done again. Listen, if he does, even if he does come now, I'm done with this, man. I'm done with the way Man United do business like this, you know what I mean? Because we need him. We need him bad. We need him. I wanted him. I want him bad. We need a player like him. 
we ain't getting him though, are we? That's like, you can't, Marcel, I can see the smile. You can't still believe he's coming, bro. You can't believe that, bro. I, I don't want to hear it, mate. Thank you. I don't think Chelsea will go in for him. And I think he'll be, we'll be the only club that will go in for him and are still in for him. And he'll that... end up to go and it will be just United. That's what I think. Marcel, we're actually hoping for a default win now. Is that what we're hoping for, lads? We're hoping for that default. That, the, 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 the only girl left at the dance of our partner. That's what we're going for. We're not in a position to do anything more than say, listen. Yeah. No, no, you're right. You're right. Yeah. We know our role. But we yeah. want the big boys, so we've got to sit back and go, please, please, no one else come in for you. And please just choose us as the last option. Please. Marcel. But you both think you both think he's coming. That's madness. Um. I I I'm I'm impatient now. I hundred percent. I want. I don't want to play like I'm in the patience corner now. I thought this business would have been done a little while ago, but I still think this will get done. Um, I and I'm quite impressed how many United have been about this one. Um, uh -oh. you know, we could have easily just gone in and paid the money. Um, but we've we've left. It's. I think it's a thing where the longer it takes, you know, Barcelona get left in a situation if they have this player still on the books. How yeah. can they register Christian Christiansen? Kessie, Lewandowski for their next season. I'm, I'm not sure if they've already uh, registered, them, registered them and Rafinha. I mean, like Nathan said, all these players are walked through the door. They're all expecting to get paid wages. But what about Frankie de Jong's wages? I, mean, I don't know. I think this deal will get done. But Frankie can easily just be a problem for them like Dembele was at one stage for them, you know, mm -hmm. and yeah, dig yeah. his heels in and make sure that he gets his wages or whatever wage, you know, that, that he's been agreed to, to, to have. So... Um, I would like to see. I would like to see us maybe um, at least look elsewhere or, or have an interest in the market elsewhere for somebody else in the event of us not getting him. But I, I still something within me says that we get him, you know, and I, and and it's going to be so important for our team if we have him. Um, and then we've got Zidane Iqbal as well that can learn off him. I think that's oh, going to yeah, be yeah. a huge learning, you know, a huge academy apprenticeship, if you will, for for Zidane Iqbal, and that will just put his game levels and levels up. And, we, and we'll see him play the season as well, hopefully. So, um, Frankie de Jong, I think he comes. I think he's a United player. I'm gonna get. <laughs> I'm gonna get that Frankie de Jong 21. <laughs> <laughs> the confidence and is I'm amazing. Looking, I love it. I'm looking forward to. It. I'm looking forward to next season. Yeah, before before we go, but before we go, then let me ask you this: from what you've seen in the preseason so far, would you be as disappointed as you were a few weeks ago if he wouldn't come? Do you think we can handle this season without? Any investment in that area? Wow, let Donny good. play there. Let Ericsson play there. That's a really good question. I mean, so our biggest problem last season, you know, we got everything else except for the CDM situation. I yeah. think us as fans, we know this club way more intimately than any of the new managers that are come in. The replacements, they don't understand that we actually feel that's our biggest issue. So if we was to go and never window without it, and then throughout the season we see issues, and we're just going to be like, we've seen, we know this, so, <laughs> we know this. Yeah. So, um, I've seen this I've before. Seen before. So yeah. I think we have to go into that market for somebody to that effect. That uh, wherever it is, whoever it is, they can play it within the within the way that Ten Hag wants them to. Nice, do you think we can do it, mate? Without without a ball. It's gonna happen. It's gonna happen. I mean, <laughs> You're still going to fill the dream, ain't you? We're gonna stick right at the end, lastminute.com, and steal him for the last minute. That's fine. But look, guys, that's the end of the questions. But what are we on to next? Saturday, finally, another match is around the corner. We're probably gonna see two mad teams. I want to see two mixes, though. I don't want to see a full eleven, and then the second game just be like. You know, kind of like the complete reserves, if you got know I mean. I want to see a mix of the two and, and see what he can do. But again, it is the week before the start of the season. So is he going to really look to see exactly what his starting lineup is going to look like? Or, and then just put the rest in the other side because the other game is on Sunday, which is uh, Raya Vallecano as well on the Sunday at 4 p.m. But we're talking about this one. Man United, Atleti Madrid. Um, and that team there, by the way, they are tough. They're no joke. Mm. So that is going to be a real test to see where we're at. I'd like to see Mal Malassia start. I'd like to see Martinez start. I'd like to see Ericsson maybe play in that Donny role or Donny um, get another chance to play in there as well. And let's see how he can really do with the full starting eleven um, that we really think we're going to start for the majority of next season. Um, Are they both at Old Trafford? No, nah, this was about to say. I think you'll see the tour team... 
against Atletico Madrid because it's in yeah. Norway. And then Old Trafford on Sunday, you'll, I think that's when you'll see Ericsson, Martinez. Yeah. So, yeah, that's what I yeah. think. Anyway, you don't know. He may want Ericsson's been there long enough now to get a flight to Norway. So maybe yeah. you might see Ericsson. I doubt you'll see Martinez on Saturday, though. I, I presume you'll see him on the Sunday against Velicardo. Did, did they play an in-house game against Wrexham? I've, I've yeah. Guess. yeah, yeah, yeah. One four nil. Yeah, Ericsson scored a little free kick yeah. in it. Apparently, I ain't seen it yet. It's, uh... Yeah, so I, I want to see the highlights. I'm gonna have to check the YouTube. Yeah, yeah. See that on there, but yeah, it's been a great show, guys. Today, um, great comments. Everyone in their comment section been absolutely amazing. Um, yeah, what can I say? Another week gone. Another week left just to the Premiership start of the season. So close! It's so close. close. Have you got your son Dream Teams ready? Because I got mine ready. Oh, mine's yeah, nearly completed. Mine? Mine's nearly just, completed. Oh, yeah, yeah. We've got to wait till the, the last sure hour before the start of the season, man. Yeah. Just make sure you've got it completed before... Because you can always join any league. As long as your team's already there, you'll never miss out on the points. points so that's yeah. all that matters for me. And as long as we get that, I'm going to... I can't wait because I was up there. <laughs> I came second in the end. I'm but taking I'm, it serious I'm, this year. I'm taking it serious. That's what's happening yeah, now. Same, same, same. same telling you guys but look um it's been great and um again stay safe and we'll see you on saturday or sunday me and garth are going to do a reaction to these two games and we'll talk about that and then we'll see you guys next week as well so again thanks a lot garth thanks a lot marcel for joining in it's been amazing see you guys next time peace